In the earlier tutorial on hitting the wall with velocity, I explained a bit about envelopes and showed how the shape of an envelope is related to whether a sound is best controlled by velocity or not. Now in this tutorial and the ones following, I'm going to go into more detail about envelopes and talk about the role they play in helping to create realistic sounding passages and show you examples of the kinds of control we can exercise over sounds by adjusting envelope parameters. So to begin, all sounds emerge from silence and eventually conclude in silence. The speed at which a sound rises from silence and achieves its peak of loudness is referred to as the attack time, and the speed at which a sound concludes in silence is called the release time. We can simply refer to what happens between the attack and release as the body of the sound, and when we trace or plot the rise and fall in volume of a sound from the attack through to the release, the resulting shape or contour is referred to as the volume envelope. In sampler instruments, there are two envelopes to consider. One is what I would call the natural envelope, which is the volume contour of the actual samples, the actual recordings. And then there's the plugin's envelope generator, and that lets us impart our own volume envelope shape onto the sound. Now in this tutorial, I'm just going to be focusing on the attack control. So as long as the attack is set to its fastest setting, its lowest value, when you play a note, you're going to hear the sound play straight out of the sampler, so the attack characteristics you'll hear are what I'd call the natural attack of the sample as it's embodied in the recording, which in the case of the string sound, sounds like this. But now listen to the sound when I turn up the attack time on the plugin's envelope generator. Yep, that makes a nice sandwich. So by turning up the attack control, I'm telling the sampler to start playback from zero and slowly raise the volume over the course of the amount of time I set on the control. And this has the effect of masking the natural attack embodied in the sample. In that example, I increased the attack time by a fairly large amount to create a series of precisely timed crescendo gestures. Reshaping or reimagining the attack by large values like that is also really useful for getting various kinds of ambient, whoosh, or mallet roll effects out of gongs and cymbals. Here's an example with a cymbal. As you can see, I'm modifying the attack time by way of a MIDI CC. In this case, I'm using CC22, which is just my personal choice for a CC number to control the attack time with in the Play plugin and various other sample libraries in my collection. Now I'd like to show you another use for modifying the attack time. This is perhaps a more typical application for slowing the attack time, and that is to change the attack character just enough to help a non-legato sound sound legato. And that part belongs to this. Now in context, that cello line sounds kind of okay, but I'm going to play it again and notice that some of the notes have a kind of hard bump on the attack. Now, my intention is to have this part played sempre legato, as indicated in the score, so those bumps are kind of a problem and you can even hear them popping through the orchestration. So my solution here was to increase the attack time on the sound just a little bit, and that helped mask the bumps, which makes the part sound more legato.
And now all together. One of the key factors in helping make this part sound more legato was making sure that the notes of the part overlap just enough so that when one note ends, the next note is just fading in on its tail. And here, the fade-ins are created at the start of each note by turning up the attack time on the envelope generator. And I'll be getting more into this technique of simulating legato with non-legato sounds later in the course. Now, so far we've seen two examples of sounds where the samples had a fast natural attack, and we deliberately slowed down the attack by lengthening the attack time artificially with the plugin's envelope generator. But in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at the opposite end of the attack spectrum in an effort to combat one of the worst problems that occurs in mockups, and that is the dreaded mushy attack. Mm -hmm.